Um, the patient activation measure is something that the Brooks system is using currently for our patients. So I want to make sure that you understand that this is really based on around what we're doing right now with the organization, how important it is, even for you all to know what it means to our patients and um, how hopefully we'll see better results for our patient outcomes. So I'm going to do my topic on the patient activation measure. Learning objectives will be, of course, the measure, the purpose, statistics around it, why it's so important, how to administer the tool, um, TAM scoring, and then the characteristics of the patients that fall within the levels, and I'll talk to you about what those levels look like. The patient activation measure is a tool that assesses the knowledge, competence, and skill a patient may have in managing their own health. So it's a predictive model. It really helps to identify patients that might go back to the hospital, and ones that might utilize a lot of our healthcare system, ones that may go back to the ER a lot sooner than uh, patients that are more activated. It is also a predictive tool to help us understand medication adherence, what patients aren't gonna take care of their medications, what patients are gonna be more activated in managing their medications and any other healthcare management. So that's, that's what the patient activation measure is. It says for more activated patients, you, um, they have a better, patients that are more activated, excuse me, will manage their health better. Patients that are less activated don't manage their health as well. So you can tell with the, there you go. You can see with the less activated patients, they are more at risk for 30 day hospital readmissions, which we all know we're looking at with our referral sources. Uh, the acute care organizations are penalized for a 30 day readmission. So it's really important to understand what patients are at greatest risk. And like I said, with less activated patients, patients that are not as um, involved or, or um, hands on with their health, they're at greater risk for going back to the hospital, uh, greater, greater uh, risk for medication errors, they're at greater risk for um, poor care coordination between healthcare providers and uh, suffer a higher uh, health consequences through poor, because of poor communication uh, amongst providers. So you can see the disparity between greater or higher activation, activated patients versus your lower activated patients. And then they have um, uh, less confidence in managing their health. So, I mean, it's pretty obvious that there's a huge difference between an activated patient, a patient that's really involved in their health versus ones that aren't. So why is the PAM important? We kind of talked about that a little bit, but of course there's a really a lip, there's a, a lot of limitations to our current approach. We as clinicians or, or providers, we really look at patients in one way. We are task oriented and we really educate that way. So it's like, all right, I'm here, I'm Sally, I'm here to help you get your meds and um, this is what it is versus going, is this patient really, does they even know what I'm talking about? Do I need to approach them differently versus I would approach someone that's very involved in their health and they know exactly what they're, what medications they're taking. So it really helps um, to know how activated a patient is and how involved they are in their health so that way we're not one size fits all approach to our education for patients. Um, again, it predicts healthy behaviors and improves patient health outcomes because they're aware, we're aware, and we're working together. So more patient centered. Um, and it really points us in the right direction to help decrease readmission rates. So if we know which patients are at greater risk because of their activation level, we'll know which ones to focus on. All right, so in order to know how activated your patient is, uh, Insigna Health has this uh, 10 question questionnaire. There are several different administrative tools. There's an eight question one, there's a 10 question one, and a 13 question one. Brooks currently uses the 10 question questionnaire. And you can see here, maybe, hopefully with these little words, it says, when it's all said and done, I'm the person who is responsible for taking an active role in my health or taking care of my health. And the patient's supposed to answer that. So the questionnaire is to be administered to the patient or the caregiver. Because sometimes the patients can't answer these questions. So we want to make sure we identify the primary caregiver so that way they can answer it for them. And then we can identify, it, do they need to be the person that we teach? Um, Based on how it's answered, we'll determine the PAM level and score. For clinicians, even non-clinicians, it's important to know how the patient or caregiver answers these questions 
This will provide insight into the patient's highest education needs. And so you really, again, want to know where your patient's at with their um, activation level, but also, you know, where are they struggling the most? Based on how the, the questions are answered, again, the patient will fall into four different PAM levels. One is the least, 10 is the, the greatest activation, and they'll also develop a score. So it's said that a patient that maybe comes in and has a PAM score of um, maybe 27, if we can increase that number by 10 points, we can decrease the rate of readmission by 17%. So it's really important to understand um, where your patient's at, where their greatest needs are, so we can help get them more involved in their health. So the characteristics of your patient's PAM levels. A PAM level one, like I said, is the least activated patients. These patients are, are they have a lack of confidence in what we take to help manage their health. But a lot of times we look at them as clinicians as um, not compliant. But really, they're overwhelmed. They don't even know where to start in managing their health. So if we one size fits all them, we approach them like we would do a PAM level four patient who's the highest activated, more than likely they're not gonna know what you're talking about. And they're just gonna kind of do what they're already doing, non-compliant. A level two patients understand a little bit, but they really um, do not make, make the connections between their overall health and their behaviors, i.e. your patients who are eating the tortillas and they have high blood sugars, they're not tying those two together. You can also see some of the other characteristics of that PAM level two patient. Your PAM level three patient, um, they're beginning to take action, they're a lot more involved, they recognize their responsibilities, but they may lack confidence in the skill to support um, you know, their consistent behaviors. So they might need a little bit more hand-holding and support um, as a PAM level four, or three. Four clearly is your highest activated patients, and they are really involved in their health. They're aware, they're kind of telling you what to do or um, letting you know what's going on with them. They're the ones that are gonna get back to the doctor's office on time and really not wait to let anything happen. So with this information, after you know what your PAM level is, where your patient's uh, highest education needs are, then you are going to coach the patient based on activation measuring. Um, coaching is a new concept as a clinician. It's a, uh, normally we teach, but coaching is really involving the patient, supporting them. 